All right, y'all. We are so hyped. Something is coming something this big. week. There's a few things. <laughs> There's a few yeah, things coming. But this week, something real good <laughs> is coming. That was a good one. Guys, for a while, we have talked so much about making something for Mission. Uh, sorry, I ruined I ruined oh. your job, bro. <laughs> something for Mission Prep. And we've, we've wanted to do it for so long. We've had so many people ask us, too. Best ways to prepare for the mission. So many people. Right? I would say that is the Probably number the biggest. one thing that we're asked about is... How can I prepare for my mission? How can I make my mission like worth it? How can I mission, 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 mission? I feel like that's all we gassed about. Totally, totally, totally. And so we finally wrote something specifically for mission prep. And I can say without a doubt, this is the most hyped I've been about anything that we've wrote. Am I the only no, one? I was just that? about to say, I'm like, we've talked about how passionate and excited we are to just give this to everyone because we know how much power it can give you in your life to be such a good missionary. Mm. Oh. I'm so excited. I would say like we really did put our hearts and souls into that book. So much so that like it was one of the first times since I've come home that it just like made me desperate to be a missionary. Oh my goodness. It made me want to go back. If they called me back for a transfer, I would go. (laughs) One transfer, put me back in Thailand. Thank you. I would go. And I would say that's one of the things that I'm most excited about is that I feel like there are specific things from each one of us individually Mm. that I think all of us were individually passionate about totally. which is one of the things that i think is really cool that i feel like it took all of the best none of us were perfect missionaries but i think it took like one part of each of our hearts that like we dumped into that that mm. we're like no like this is mm. it and i just i don't know i feel like it's one of the things that i'm the most proud of honestly totally. maybe in my life but like specifically Whoa. this year yeah like That's i really am proud it. of it yeah i'm so jealous i didn't have this <laughs> i probably you would have loved it dj yeah i mean i don't know if well yeah I would have. <laughs> I should have loved it. It was right before my mission. Yeah, I'm jealous. It's going to be good. Mm. So, nice. be looking for it. We'll be posting week, all about it this yes, week. Yes, keep your eyes open. Get ready. Welcome to This Is Kingdom, a good news brand podcast. This is Grace. This is Talon. This is TJ. This is Hollis. And this week, y'all, we're talking about President Nelson's talk from conference. Man, did we love it. Did we, we feel, yeah. When was the last time you heard a talk from a hundred-year-old prophet? When was the last time? Oh, this is actually oh, my first yeah. time. First this is crazy time. Okay. Question. <laughs> and we don't know the name of the talk. Yeah. <laughs> and that's fine. True. We're recording this before we've even had the chance to read it. We're going <laughs> yeah, we, just yeah, we, based we, off we first listen. Of and that's awesome. Like, they oh. did it today. Oh, what the? Yeah. I checked an hour ago and that wasn't there. The Lord Jesus Christ will come again. Wait, that that's so fire. Fire. That's good. Good. That gave me chills. We were like, oh, the best is yet to Ooh, come. No. The time is now. No. That's Jesus is so coming. Jesus, Jesus is, coming. is coming. The fact that we just discovered that. Live in this episode was great. You got a live reaction. This is huge. Not the only live reaction. Okay, listen, this talk, there's so many, so many good things we could take from this talk, but there's a certain part that I want to talk about. Honestly, it'll probably lead us to a lot of other parts, but it made me think of this experience that I had a while back. I had this friend that I looked up to so much. It was one of those friends that I was just like, I want to be like you. And I was trying to get advice from him. And and so one day he did this drawing for me and he drew this little stick figure on a boat in the water. And he said, what do you see? I'm like, it's a man on the boat. He's like, yeah, where is he? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, he's in the ocean, middle of the ocean. I was like, cool. Then he said, where's he going? And I was like, "I, I don't know, wherever the waves take him. And he said, exactly, wherever the waves take him. I was like, nice. And then with his little stick figure drawing, he drew an island in. And he said, okay, now where's he going? I was like, well, he's probably going right to the island. He said, exactly. He's going right to that island. And then he went off and he said something that just hit me so hard. He said, if you don't have islands in your life, you are going to be floating around on a boat going wherever the waves push you. And that might be somewhere good. That might be somewhere bad. You honestly have no say, no control. You're just going with the flow. And honestly, I feel like that's a pretty common thing to say, I'm just going to keep my options open. I'm just going to go with the flow. Whatever happens, happens, right? Which is a good attitude to have. But he looked at me, he said, if you get an island, if you decide where you want to go in life, that is going to make all the difference. That's how you're going to start accomplishing things. And what made me think of it is in this talk, President Nelson said, I have learned that the most crucial question we each must answer, which I love, he didn't say 
an important question, a good question. He said, the most crucial question we each must answer is this, to whom or to what will I give my life? And I, I thought of that question and I thought of this story and I feel like President Nelson is just challenging every single one of us. You got to decide what your island is. You got to decide where you're going in life. You got to decide what kind of person you're going to be and to who or to what you're going to give your life. When I hear you say that, I think of like some of the some experts and some people that I look up to when they talk about when you help someone out of like an addiction. You know, a lot of times I think the the things that our minds go to if you're trying to help someone out of addiction, well, okay, well you got to put them in a in a certain program and you you got to make sure you put, you know, blocks on their phone and change their environment. But this person I really look up to, he said the person, in order to break them out of the addiction, you need to give them a future that they're like so excited about, mm. a future that they're so hopeful for, something that they get out of bed and they can't wait to go and do that thing because it's that journey and it's that purpose, it's that vision that's going to pull them out of the slums that they're in. And I love that what President Nelson's saying and what you say, Talon, is like, if we could make that decision to give our life to Jesus, if we can make that our future, it's so hopeful. It's, it's so exciting. It's more than just reading scriptures and praying. It's more, it's like, it's it's a future that will change your life and that will get you moving and that will level you up in thing, in ways that nothing else can. I love that. I love that question President Nelson presents because when I think about that question, I think about like different phases of my life. I feel like my middle school phase I was like chasing lots of happiness, you know? I was chasing the next Pokemon game, right? That made me so happy. <laughs> and maybe I was chasing the, the label brands like Aeropostale. Wow, I'm outing myself out right now. So bad. Aeropostale was Yeah, was that say, is I so that crazy. A while. I was, nice. And as I got older, I feel like I started chasing different things that I thought would make me happy. But when I took a step back, I realized that there was more to life than being happy because these things that were making me happy weren't helping me when life was throwing its curveballs at me. They weren't helping me when things didn't go my way. And I realized when I took a step back and chose Jesus, he gave me more than just happiness, but he gave me purpose and he gave me direction. I love in this talk where the prophet says he weeps for people who are struggling spiritually and who are carrying these burdens alone because they do not understand what Christ has done for them. And when you choose Jesus and understand what he has done for you, he will give you direction. He will give you purpose. And he will give you a place where you can go to where you're not floating anymore. And you will know that you can have a centered life around him. And that makes it all worthwhile. Something that I think is so interesting, even just listening to this conversation, is how I feel like all three of you demonstrated a different reason why you should give your life to Jesus. Mm. Like all three of you were on the same team. Like, yeah, give your life to Jesus. Like let him have your heart. But all three of you brought up different circumstances, brought up different reasons why, brought up different scenarios. And I think that's one of the coolest parts is that it is a choice. And choices are individual. We get to make our own choice, which means that we get to look at our own experiences, our own histories, our own hearts, and we have the ability to make that decision. And I think that's something that's really admirable about Jesus is that he's not forcing our hand. He's not playing our cards for us. He says, this is what I have to offer you. And if that's something you want, choose me. Hmm. Simple as that. Choose me. And yeah, there's going to be people that try to persuade us, not because they want to manipulate us, but rather because of what they have experienced in their relationship with Jesus makes them want us to experience the same thing. And my reason I feel like is different. Like I remember one day so clearly, I'm not a huge, like I won't lie, in my personal study, I'm not a huge talk reader, like old. Now I am because of this podcast, but before <laughs> that, like it wasn't my go-to for study. But I found one talk given a long time ago, and I probably read it at least twice a month, maybe more. Like it is like over and over and over on my rotation. And it's so called, intrigued to know what this talk is. Born of God, and it's by President Ezra Taft Benson, and it's October 1985. Wow, and you were oh, digging into the deep, deep ones. Deep. <laughs> and wow. it has one of the most profound quotes in it 
out of, like that I've ever read in my life. And it actually isn't that profound, but to me it was. And mm. I remember the day that I read it. And honestly, this sentence is one of the things that led me to want to dedicate my life to God more than anything else in my entire life. And this is it. It's so simple. 12 men did quite a lot to change the world 1900 years ago. 12 simple men. Yes, Christ changes men and changed men can change the world. And to me, that makes my that makes me want to give my heart to Jesus. That makes me want to give my time to Jesus. That makes me want to give everything I have to Jesus because I have seen how he can transform a life. And that is what I want for myself. I want him to make my life into something more remarkable, more wonderful, more miraculous than anything I could have ever dreamt. Not because I'm extraordinary, not because I'm someone special, but because I am someone simple. I am just mm. a simple, simple person. But with Jesus, I can experience marvelous things. And to me, he is worth giving my heart to. Mm. Amen. Oh I Amen. love that. There's, there's, these two, there's these two things that are like hit me so hard with, with this analogy of being in the boat and going towards the island. I think with our on our journey with Christ, when we're rowing towards the island, I think one of the hardest things is sometimes we can't really see the island. And so sometimes the rowing and, and the praying and the studying and going to the temple, sometimes it can feel monotonous and sometimes it feels like we're not doing much. But I think something so cool that God has given us and we've seen it this weekend is we got like we got that helicopter up above, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, we got like the prophet yeah. and the leaders that's like shouting like, keep rowing, keep going, man. Go to the so temple, man. Row <laughs> right, you row got right. This. You got this. Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. Mm. It's right up ahead. And so, and then, and then in the scriptures where it, like in the, in the story with the tree of life, I love this, but this idea that Jesus is not just at the other side of the island, but like in the scriptures, Jesus is also in the boat with you. You know mm. what I'm saying? And he's in the water cause he's the living water, you know what Dang. I'm saying? And he's the light, like it's just, <laughs> he's everything. And so just two things kind of practical. I hope that we remember on our journey with Christ when it gets tough and when we get tired is that, um, man, we got our prophets we could listen to, to, to help. Uh, encourage us on. And then Jesus is all around us in this journey. Mm. We don't have to do a bunch of things to get to him. He's like with us mm. like the whole way. That's so good. That's so good. And I, I love, I love what you brought up that it really is a choice. And President Nelson makes that so clear. He says, you need to answer that question, what you want to give your life to. And then he says, I chose to give it to Jesus. Here's why. And I love how it's it's not your parents' decision. It's not what your friends are doing. It's not what anybody else is or isn't doing. It's what you decide you want to do. And I actually think my number one motivator for wanting to give my life, my heart, my everything to Jesus is I have this core belief that, that I will stand in front of Jesus one day and that I'll see him. And there's this verse that I read it when I was kind of in my dark time, when, when I was a teenager. And it was one of the first verses that hit me. And it said that the righteous shall have a perfect knowledge of their enjoyment and their righteousness when they stand before him. And when I see Jesus, I want to be able to look at him and say, man, I wasn't perfect, but I, I gave you everything. I gave you my best. I did everything I could to follow you and to help as many people find you as possible. And I, I really just believe when President Nelson's talking about Jesus coming that that is going to be one of the most glorious days, and I can't wait for that day. My back. <laughs> TJ's, TJ's laptop has Sorry, his screen time time limit. <laughs> is that what it was? 15, 15 more minutes. Yeah. Oh, gosh, this episode's crazy. I saw his pain as they nailed him to a cross. I wish that we could understand the cost. He looked on me as he had once before, saying, teach my word to all forevermore. So I'll say, nations fall behind him, the rivers crawl to find him, mountains move just to let him through come and never leave him just let your heart believe him never let his light go 
Never let your love grow dim. See you next week.